Hello and welcome back to my channel for my next how-to video. I've titled this one, How to Play Dofus in 2020. Now, the goal here is this is not a beginner's guide. This isn't a tutorial on how to play Dofus. This guide is to help people who are coming back to the game. I see it a lot on Reddit. I've gotten asked a lot in my videos, people saying, hey, love the videos, love the content, coming back to the game, where do I start? Well, that's exactly what this guide is for. I've got a whole bunch of stuff to go over, hopefully some tips, some tricks, sets to get you started with. This is by no means going to take you all the way up to level 200. This is more of the lower levels, get your feet running, maybe update you on some things that have changed depending on if you've only been away for a year or 10 years, there could be substantial changes. So we're gonna go over a lot of stuff. I'll display a little bit of a timestamp here. This will kind of give you a general idea of where you can skip to in the video if there's just a specific subject that you're wanting to learn more about. And this is probably the first video. There might be two or three parts to this as time progresses. When I make these how-to videos, I get a lot of feedback from the community on things that I missed, things that I didn't know, and I want to compile all that information and also be able to put that in another video. So this might be like a part one of how to play Dofus in 2020. So if you are, a regular player and you, and you watch this video, if you find something that I missed, please leave it in the comments below so that other people can find it and then I can find it and hopefully include it in a, a future video as well. If you're new here and haven't been to my channel before, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I cover a plethora of content, strictly PVM. I am not a PVP channel. In fact, one of the things I'll be going over later in this video is other channels that you can get great material from from PVP to professions to dungeon guides, all that stuff. I got some great channels to recommend to you for all of that. I, however, do not PVP. I love playing the computer. I don't know if it's the competitor in me, but PVP just gets me too worked up, and so I stay away from it. I enjoy the PVM side of this content. So if you're a PVM player as well, please consider hitting that subscribe button and check out some of the other stuff I got. With the introduction out of the way, let's get started. All right, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta pick a server. Now what I recommend, if you're gonna run just a single account, definitely go to the Izzy server. It's built for single accounts and the population's very high. It's an extremely active server. The people there are very friendly, very active guilds, much easier time trying to find things to run if you're a single player. If you're gonna run multiple accounts, Echo is fantastic, but the population isn't near as high. So unless you get yourself into an active guild, which I would recommend, you're gonna have a harder time trying to find things to run if you play by yourself. If you're looking for a challenge, that's where your heroic and your epic servers come into play. And I believe on both of those, you can multi-account as well. But just know that on these servers, when you die, you're dead. You have to start back over. So that's the first thing you have to do is pick a server. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on all these classes. In fact, I have a how-to video where I go over a little bit of each one of these classes. But these first six are considered a level one star difficulty. From Osa all the way up through the Pandawa is considered a two star difficulty. And then the last four here are considered the three star difficulties. Now, the only reason I bring you to this screen is, again, I'm not going over what each of these classes do or anything. But I would suggest maybe try a class you haven't done before. If you played back in the day and you're just not coming back, jumping straight back onto a character that you already know might be a good way to hit the ground running in a way that you don't feel like you have to learn the character again. But you might get bored kind of quick if you feel like, oh, I'm just doing all the same stuff I was before. Try a different class. If there's one you've always been curious about, even these more difficult ones, if you're playing a single character, You'll be amazed at how quickly you'll begin to learn these classes if you're focused on just that one character. But try one you haven't done before. If you weren't aware of this, Dofus has a multiplier now. So if you pick one of these classes, let's say that you pick the Panda here, and you get up to level 30, and you're like, I am not digging this class. Well, don't delete that character. Where you can put all your stuff, you can put it in your bank, or you can go into what's called a Haven bag, put all your equipment and money and everything into that chest, come back here, create another character, and your character is going to get a multiplier of XP until it reaches the same level as your next leveled character. So if your panda was level 30 and you come back here and you create a Fekka, well, your Fekka is going to get double XP all the way up to level 30. 
And then let's say that you carry that character on up to level 50. Well, at level 50, you're like, eh, they're kind of cool, but I still kind of really want to check out what the SRAM is like. So you come back here and you create a SRAM. Well, the SRAM's going to get triple XP up to level 30, and then double XP up to level 50. So you don't have to be as afraid as you did back in the day of creating a class and going a long ways into that class and not liking the class. The, the multiplier makes it very easy to experiment with different classes. All right, got my character here. I'm back. Ha, <laughs> like what I did there. So when you first create your character, you're gonna be here in the tutorial area of Incarnum. I recommend you go through this. Depending on how long it's been since you played, this has changed. It's not near as cumbersome to go through. Once you get all the way through it, you're gonna get a set. It's not a great set, but it's something to get you started. Plus, it also gives you some achievement points, and I'm gonna go over achievement points here a little bit later. Fantastic way to get some XP, and some commas and even resources if it's a brand new character. All right, I just completed the last step in the tutorial. And as you can see, I hit level three literally right as I finished the tutorial. I'm guessing that's on purpose. But knocking that out got me a set, a little bit of a set bonus here. Again, nothing fancy, but just something to get you started. One of the, one of the biggest things people get nervous about is when you build a class and you're like, I don't know where to put my points so that my character is going to be really good. Again, depending on when you came back, I, I'll try to refrain from saying that from here on, but some of this I'll be saying and you'll think it doesn't apply, and it's only because I don't know when you came back to the game. A while back, Ankama revised all the classes so that they can all be built in all four elements. Now obviously, some classes are going to strive better in certain elements over others. You can build a chance-based IOP now. I used to post on the forums way back in the day when people would ask, what, what IOP should I build? And I'd say, build chance. And they had no chance spells. It was funny. Anyways, you can build one now. And in fact, they're pretty decent from what I hear. Every class has all four elements. So it'd be a good idea to kind of go through and check these out. See which ones you like the most. Now they have your normal spell, which will be here on the left-hand side. And then you get later what are called alternative spells or alternate versions alternative word here once I hit level 95 striking word becomes available and I can choose between having this one or this one and it doesn't mean that it's a modified version of this one it just means that you can choose between either side like this this is an intelligence based spell but maybe you're a strength based character well if you never use this you can switch to this alternative spell at 165 and now you've got another strength based spell but you're gonna to get to 165 before this becomes available. So those are things you can look at when you're trying to figure out, okay, what build do I wanna do? Another great thing that was implemented a while back, if you're subscribed, is this reset characteristics button. For example, let's say we put the 10 right here, and it was like, man, I did not wanna do that. I wanna try the chance build. Reset, okay, and now I can put them right here in the chance build. Oh, you know what? I kinda of did like that agility build. Reset, okay, put them over here. You can do it as many times as you want as long as you're subscribed. You can try any build combination you want and you don't have to be super scared about, man, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. I don't know if this is the meta. I don't know if this is the right build for this class and I don't wanna have to go through all those hoops to reset it. You don't have to worry about that anymore. They made it super easy. Now, since I am on the subject of characteristic points, another thing I get asked sometimes is, well, how should I distribute my points? Because that's another important thing. I generally tend to go with one of two suggestions, especially at the early levels. Whatever element you're going to pick, if you're going to go agility, pump your agility up to 100 points. Now, where you go from there afterwards, I would either go ahead and keep pumping into agility until you have a base of 200, or... If you're having a hard time staying alive, especially depending on your class or if you play solo, maybe switch over and start doing vitality. What I typically do, especially with this new reset button, is I'll pump my points into here and then I'll go and I'll start pumping them into vitality. Because once you've reached 100, it goes from one point equals one agility to two points equal one agility. And then after you pass 200, it goes to three points equal one agility. What I like to do is I'll pump this up to 100 and then I'll just start pumping into Vitality until I get maybe, 
I don't know, 30 or 40 levels, hit the reset button, move all those extra points down here into agility, so then I feel like I get a big bump in my damage, and then I start pumping back into vitality again. Once my main element reaches 200, then I go strictly vitality again up until I go another 50 levels or so, and then I bump them all the way down. I typically stop my main element, whatever it's gonna be, at 300 as the base, because once you hit four to one, the, the, the damage increase you're gonna get so small and you could do far better having that vitality. If you're gonna go with a duo element build, I typically would stop both elements at 200 and then put the rest in vitality. Now, if you're gonna go Omni, the research that I've done, you get kind of mixed feedback. Some people say put 100 in all four elements. Some people put, I think it's like 150 in all four elements. But I, I do feel like you're always gonna have at least one, maybe two elements, that are struggling to be equal with the others. So, you know, maybe maybe you mix that up. Maybe you put 100 in one and 150 in another, and you know, depending on how precise you wanna be with that, that's another option for you. So that's a general idea of how I do the character points. That is by no means the only way to do it or even necessarily the best way to do it. It's just the way that I do it. Hopefully that gives you at least an idea to try, but the biggest thing I want you to take away from this is don't be scared to try things because if you're subbed, you've got this reset button and it makes it really easy. All right, the next thing I would recommend, start here in Incarnum. I know the temptation to just run out of Incarnum and head down into Astra can be very tempting, but they've kind of changed things. Back in the day, you could run down there, start attacking Peewees, and you get much better XP, but the Peewees actually could do some damage now. The Peewees can put some hurt on, and from a distance. So they're not as easy as they used to be. But up here in Carnum, there's some great things you can do to get yourself going. Bring up your quest menu. Go down to quests in Carnum. Consider doing these especially if you're not subscribed. If you're free to play right now, take full advantage of all these free areas. The free area now includes Incarnum, all of Astrib, and then each of the areas around Astrib. So like the, the Gobble City, you can go up there now and battle the Royal Gobble, the sand area. There's a lot more you can play now that's free to play. So don't rush it. There's a handful of quests here spread out. I think there's 26 steps total. If you go through here, you're gonna get chunks of XP, and you're gonna get resources. These resources can be valuable to sell in the market just to get yourself kinda of up and going, or you can use them for early crafts if you wanted to work on professions. I'll go over professions a little bit here in a minute. But also, as if you accomplish these, you get 60 achievement points for knocking all these out. And then if you also go underneath Exploration, Incarnum, just run onto the map of each of these areas, you get almost another 20 achievement points that gets you close to 100 achievement points before you've even left Incarnum. Now, the reason I bring that up is because if you are gonna be playing by yourself or as a solo character, if you get to 500 achievements, you get a free sidekick. You know, they're fun. There's something extra to have in your team and, and it's definitely better. You just need that little extra help and you're playing by yourself. These things can be helpful for that. And you get one for free. There's another two that you get at 1,000 achievements. But the 500 is pretty easy, and you get almost 20% of the way there just by taking care of Incarnum. Professions. You want to make money in this game. You want to make good money in this game. Professions are typically the way you got to go. But they take a lot of work, a lot of effort. If you want to make commas without working professions, you kind of got two choices. One try to find the most valuable resource to go gather and then you list it in the market. You're gonna get XP from fighting those mobs and then those resources you drop, you go sell them. In fact, I've got several guides I've made to try to help people figure out what to go fight. In Incarnum here, the small tofus up here, they drop a chimeric feather, a more rare drop, and they sell really well. Another thing you can do if you wanna make money passively without having to necessarily go grind a profession very much is pick up the hunter profession. This is the hunter profession, and what you're gonna get are these meats. In order to level your hunter, you have to actually craft the meats into edible meats. You can't just keep them as raw. Now, as just raw meats, they sell pretty well as also, and everything you fight up here in Incarnum is going to drop this meat. If you wanna to continue to use your, your hunter profession as you continue to level, you wanna make sure you get your hunter to at least level 10 before you leave Incarnum. 
and it's really easy to get a hunting weapon right up here in Incarnum. Also, looking at this, you can see you can have all the professions on a single character now. I know back in the day you could have three main professions and then three mages. Not anymore. Now you can have every mage and every profession on a single character. I'm so glad they did that. But go up here to your carver, get yourself three Ashwood and three Magical Cures, which you can either buy or you can fight any of these things up here, any of these flowers to drop these Magical Cures. Get three of those. Go craft yourself a hunting bow and equip that and see how the effect says it's a hunting weapon. Now you'll start dropping meats from everything you fight up here. So now you'll be leveling your character and you're dropping something that you can sell. And these things sell very quickly because people are constantly trying to level a hunter. And a lot of people, if they don't start this profession until later in the game, they want to skip past these low levels. So these meats sell pretty well. If you're going to try to level a profession to make money, which is a fantastic way to do it. What I recommend is you can start with some of the gathering professions. Those are easy to do passively. As you're playing the game, you can be leveling those because you don't have to equip a fishing pole. You don't have to equip an ax anymore. You just go up to a tree, you go up to a pond puddle and you click the button and it starts doing its thing. But if you're gonna try to do one of these crafting professions, I recommend try to pick one and focus on it. If you try to create a shoemaker, a jeweler, and a tailor all at the same time, and you're trying to use your resources to level all three of those at the same time, you can get away with that fairly easily in the lower levels. But as you begin to climb, what you'll find is you're leveling them a lot slower because your resources are being divided among three different professions. Focus on one. Pick the one that you think is going to make you some really good money. Handymans are pretty good because of keys and breeding items. Those things sell pretty well. Artificer is also really good because idols and trophies, people are constantly buying those. Pick a profession that you're really going to like and then focus all your effort on that, at least until you get a good ways up there to where maybe it's generating some money for you. Then consider going and working on one of your other professions. You're going you're gonna to get a lot further, a lot faster if you focus your efforts on a single crafting profession instead of dividing your efforts among several. So if you finish the tutorial, you get this little beginner set. Another good set to go for is the adventure set. If you click on the encyclopedia down here, what you'll see is that each one of the enemies in Incarnum have a different piece of the set it will drop. First, start over here and fight these guys until you maybe drop a cloak. And then you can look at, say, the cemetery. You click on one of these, okay, they drop the hat. So once you've dropped the hat, move on to a different enemy. Don't sit here and keep fighting them trying to drop more adventure pieces. Each enemy only drops one of the pieces. And if you're not familiar with this encyclopedia, this is a fantastic resource to figure out what items are dropped, what their drop rates are, how rare are they. Another cool feature about it is when you click it, it automatically pops up into what area of the map that you are on. So if you go start in another area, if you run down to Astrib and you're like, oh, what enemies are in this area? If you click that, it automatically pops up in that area of Astrib showing you the monsters and things that are in that area. So it's a fantastic tool for trying to figure out maybe what you're looking for, what you wanna go to attack. All right, so you come to Astrib and you're like, whoa, this is totally different. Well, that's true. They've completely revamped Astrib as well a while back. So back in the day, you had multiple markets you had to go to, zigzagging all over the place. Well, now you basically have three. You have an equipment market, you have a resource market, and you have a consumables market, which makes listing and selling things way easier than it used to be. So this is Astrib. And what I recommend when you come down to Astrib, first thing you do, go fight the peewees as long as you can handle them. And what I do recommend is start out with a single or two peewees, because I'm telling you, if it's been long enough since you played, these things hit way harder than they used to be. If you're not aware, you can hold the Z button, will show you the list of everything that is in that mob. So you got a single peewee right here. Attack the peewee of your element, because you're gonna start to drop the pieces associated with that. If you've got some money, if you did a quite a bit of stuff up there in Incarnum, just go to the market and maybe consider buying the set that you need because they're very cheap. These things get dropped all day long. The whole set is extremely cheap. 
but the Pee Wee set is also very good. It's a great first element set and it comes in all the elements. So if you're chance based, go fight the blue ones and drop the water chance set. All right, here is the equipment market. And as you can see, it looks way different than it used to be as well, but it's wonderful and it's very easy to use. Select the item that you're looking for. You can pick the range that you're looking for and you can pick what you're looking for on that thing. You're level 10 and you're looking to level 20. You want a ring and you need vitality. You can check that, gives you the average price. You can then click on the item and it's gonna list all that for sale for that item. And you can check multiple as well. You can hit vitality and power. Look there, this ring has both vitality and power. So a fantastic resource to try to get yourself set up for going out and doing bigger things. All right, looking at levels between 20 and 40, here's some quick recommendations on maybe some sets to shoot for after you've gotten your Pee-wee set. For agility, this little toady setup is pretty impressive. It's a two-piece set that gives you 50 extra agility. And the nice thing with it being only two pieces, you can then mix and match with some other things to go with it. But for two pieces, it's a pretty killer deal. Another option, if damage isn't necessarily just what you're looking for, you can actually get this vegetative set and for three low level pieces, you can get yourself an extra AP. And we know extra AP is fantastic. So those are a couple options for you for agility builds. If you're a chance based character, I'm rather fond of the sponge set here. It's a full eight piece set. So it's a bit of work to get it all, but it comes with an AP. It's got some really good chance damage and it's got a little bit of agility in there as well, which can help keep you from getting locked from things. Another option for you once you get up a little bit higher is this micro set probably quite a bit more expensive, but again, it comes with an AP, has some really good water damage, and this is a four set. So it frees you up to be able to mix and match some extra pieces in there if you're trying to tailor your class to a specific element. For strength and intelligence, you can almost never go wrong with the gobble set. One nice thing about the gobble set is they have lowered the level cap for the royal gobble set. So get yourself the regular gobble set first, comes with an AP, and then once you get up a little bit higher, start moving towards this Royal set, which has a whole lot more vitality, more damage, and it also still carries an AP. Plus there's always the option of just going custom build. You can go in there, especially with that new market system, and you can really fine tune some damage, some health, some vitality. You can mix and match. If you need more summons, if you need more range, there's a lot of equipment that you can choose from using that market to build yourself out the way that you want. Those are just a couple quick recommendations. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna go over are some great YouTube channels to go to for some resources. I feel like right now, Dofus has more English commentating content creators on YouTube than there has been in a very long time, and it's very exciting. If you're looking for PVP content, The Epiphany is definitely the best recommendation that I have for you out of the current content creators. He does some fantastic work. He's got some high-level hard quest videos that he's done. He's also one of the only content creators that I have found that also teaches you how to capture the rye needles because there's a there's a process to that. So if you're looking for that, he's got some guides for it. He's also got some fantastic guides he's made for PVP that is very unique. I don't PVP and I still love watching his stuff just because it's so unique. One guide he made here recently was how to predict a person's element from their stats. Now, if you get serious into PVP, that can give you a huge leg up on knowing which spells you should be using and which things you should go for because you already have a little bit of idea of maybe what they're wearing and what they're weak to and all that. It's fantastic. It's a very well done video and he's got lots of great stuff. He's got some great maging tutorials on here as well. If you're looking for some outstanding PVP content and also some very unique guides, he's a great channel to go to. Bamus is a content creator also to be keeping an eye out for. If you already have a high level profession, he's got some great videos showing you the potential you can make with those professions being at their high level. But if you're low level, keep an eye on this guy as well because I believe he's posted on the Reddit site that he's got plans for some low level guides also, teaching people how to level their professions quickly and effectively. A very hot subject if you're trying to get those professions up so that you can start to make some money. Another fantastic channel that is 
recently come back, uh, Frostrax. Some of you guys probably already know of him because he's been around a long time. He's made some fantastic videos in the past. And right now he's on a, a series where he's going to go from literally the beginning down here in Incarnum and he's done the field dungeon. And his plan is to go through every dungeon in the game and give you a breakdown tutorial on how to defeat those dungeons. I'm sure he's got ideas for some other videos outside of dungeons to do, but this is a fantastic series to be looking at. If you're if you're going to be going through some dungeons, this is a great resource to go to and get some really in-depth information about that dungeon before you even go inside. He goes over the boss spells, how they work, the damage output, all that kind of stuff. So it's a fantastic channel to check out. My last suggestion here is Defy, who, again, has come back here recently and has some really fun stuff he's posted. Another big Colosseum player, a lot of PvP content, but he has recently started a series that I am pumped for. It's called Rags to Riches. Basically, what he did is he took a character, put 10,000 commas on him, and he's going to see what he can do. He's going to show you tips and tricks on how to take that 10,000 commas and move it up into 20 billion commas. No, he didn't say that. But the goal is to take it all the way up to as high as you can. And it's pretty cool to see somebody just giving you ideas and suggestions and starting out with just a little bit of money. Because when you come back to the game, that might be all you got. It's just a handful of commas to work with. This could be a great series to watch to get those tips and tricks. He's going to show you how to work the markets, how to do some profession stuff, how to use ruins to make some money. He's got some great stuff here. So another channel to really keep an eye on. He's got some fantastic older stuff that like some rogue tutorials but yeah defy here he has some really good stuff to check out as well and then there's me my channel i've got all kinds of content on here i've got a quest to 200 series that i'm doing which is more of an entertainment sort of series i've got the comma making guides and these are with no professions now i try to give some tips and tricks perhaps on profession use for some of those resources but the idea behind these are you don't want to do professions you just want to go out there and fight things and you're trying to find out what to go fight to make the money that's what those videos are geared towards and i've spanned several different levels now for those and there's several more still to come i've also got some how-to guides treasure hunting picking a class how to run multiple accounts at one time lots of tips and tricks and such in there and there'll be more how-to guides come as i progress and if you are looking to do all those Incarnum quests, this down here, the very first six episodes, these are the very first episodes I ever made on YouTube. So they're not well polished or anything, but they do go through each of the steps. So if you're looking for a video you can follow along with to complete all those steps up in Incarnum, you can follow those six episodes there. All right, well, that's everything I got for this how-to guide, how to come back and play Dofus in 2020. Again, there might be more parts to this come out as I get more information, but hopefully this helps you hit the ground running. Gave you some ideas on uh, how to make some early commas, some early gear to pick out, some resources and some channels to go to if you're looking for specific information. You've also got the Dofus wiki site that you can go to. The Dofus Reddit site is very active. If you're looking to try to get suggestions on what element to go with what class, what gear to pick, people will even just build you a set right on there and say, hey, this is what you wanted to do. This is a great set. It's a very great community to go to if you're looking for some feedback. If you haven't been to the Dofus Reddit site before, I highly recommend you go check that out. Anyways, thanks again for coming by. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you got something out of it. If you could do me a favor, smack that like button. Helps you to promote my channel and, and let people know that I'm here. And that's all I got for this one. I'll see you on the next one.